Hey, it's Chef Chris Santos, and you're watching Heavy Consequence. Hey everyone, it's Spencer from Heavy Consequence. I'm here with Chris Santos, chef, metalhead, all around cool guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, yeah. We've been enjoying your food all festival We're here at Louder Than Life. It's been delicious, and uh, we really appreciate you uh, feeding us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, we, we keep making the menu bigger and bigger and bigger. It was really supposed to be just a couple of snacks. Tonight's menu, we have like 10 different items. Um, tonight's, tonight should be great. Great way to close out the fest. Cool. And for those who are less familiar with you, uh, tell us kind of your journey, how you got into culinary arts, and then uh, maybe some of your early career path as a chef. How much time you got? <laughs> you, can, um, you can give me the brief answer. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm almost 52. Um, I stepped in a restaurant kitchen when I was 13. So that's 40 years, essentially. Um, you know, uh, was lucky enough to meet a chef at a very young age that took me under his wing, and I actually wrote a cookbook that came out a couple years ago, and um, I lost contact with him. I can't find him anywhere, even with Google, uh, but, I, but, I, but I gave him a big shout out for taking me under his wing as a kid and um, showing me the ropes. And, uh, you know, I moved to New York City in 93 um, with like $500 in my pocket, no job, and, um, I don't know. It's, it was definitely a journey. Um, you know, opened my first restaurant in like 1999, um, which uh, unfortunately the events on 9/11 ruined that dream. So I was really lost for a while. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and uh, I worked really hard to open that restaurant and, and make a name for myself in New York City. Um, and I'd done all that, but then with, after 9/11, everything was gone. Um, but I stayed the course and. Uh, I opened a restaurant called Stanton Social in oh, 2004. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I live in New York, so uh, yeah, very familiar with that. Lower East Side, and um, it was an instant hit, and it's been nothing but full speed ahead since then. Yeah, and right now, how many restaurants are you involved with, and are there any uh, new ones in uh, development? Yeah, so on a daily basis, um, you know, I, I created a, a restaurant called Beauty in Essex. We have locations in New York City, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas, so I run those day to day. Uh, we're opening a fourth location as well. I'm also opening up a steakhouse um, at Caesars in Las Vegas. I'm actually, it's gonna be called Stanton Social Prime. Oh, wow. So we're bringing that brand back. Um, but my company that I'm a partner in, we actually op uh, operate over 70 restaurants and nightclubs uh, across the world. It's a huge company. Wow, very cool. And as I mentioned, you're also a big metal head. Yes. And uh, tell me how you've, uh, you know, your journey into being a metal head. What, what, what bands were you exposed to? How did uh, you get exposed to it early on? And uh, uh, your love for metal in general. Yeah, so when I was about seven or eight, I um, my bro my older brother had Kiss Alive too, so that was my gateway drug into metal. Um, and it wasn't long after that, um, this, there was this girl I had a crush on. She's a couple years older than me, and she uh, she had me come over one night and listen to Merciful Fate. Oh yeah, that was it. It was all it was over. King Diamond's voice just yeah, got it was you. <laughs> over. It was over. It was actually it was actually not Merciful Fate. It was. The Fatal Portrait King Diamond record. Oh, okay, to. okay. But in the coming days, we listened to everything. Um, and then um, I, got, I got to grow up in what I think is a really amazing time because in, when, in the mid-80s, when I was a teen, um, that's when Slayer and Metallica were coming up, but that's also when Motley Crue and Rat and all those bands were coming up. And so I really like enjoyed all of it and I just got sucked in. And um, to this day, I'm a huge multi-genre metal fan. Yeah. And you started your own label, Blacklight Media. I did. Can you tell us about, you know, what went into, you know, what uh, drove you to, to start your own label? So I became friends with Brian Slagle some time ago. Um, Brian's, you know, known for uh, discovering Metallica. Um, he has Metal Blade Records, which is the largest independent metal label in the world. Uh, they just, they're, they're, they're celebrating their 40 year anniversary this year. Um, we became friends, we started hanging out, he'd come to my house. And I would play him music he'd never heard before, and he started signing bands like Harm's Way and um, a bunch of other bands. And after he signed four or five bands that I showed him, he's like, "We should just do a label together." You know what I mean? You, you have such a great ear. And so I said no at first, but he was like, "No, no, no. We'll we'll do a lot of the heavy lifting." And uh, I eventually said yes. And, and now we we're about five years old. We've got great bands from not only the United States but from London and Spain and. Australia, um, and it's going really well. You know, a lot of people know you from Chopped on the mm. Food Network. Uh, I've watched it myself. Uh, anything else uh, in the TV pipeline for you? Well, so Chopped has been amazing. It's been a, I've been on that show for 15 years, which is un incredible. We actually, next week, I'm going to New York to start shooting another 40 episodes. Wow. Um, I, I'm not doing all 40, but the show is. Um, 
and I do guest appearances on like Beat Bobby Flay and shows like that, but I'm just really, really busy, so I don't have a lot of time for extra television. And are you guys, I always wanted to know, because I watched the show, and are you guys uh, mostly polite? Is there ever anything you ever eat that's like undercooked and you're like, you want to spit it out, and, but you have to be kind of polite on camera? Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like 60% of the time the food is good, but, we, but, but with some issues. 20% of the time it's unbelievably amazing and then 20% of the time <laughs> it's really bad but we try our best to find it the best the good in it you know maybe it's maybe it doesn't taste great but it was really creative yeah. you know we try to look at it like that cool so, and I got a fun one for you to end it and uh, I was gonna name a few bands and I was gonna ask you to name a dish that cool. would go with their music I know <laughs> you haven't had time to think about it yeah. but uh, I'm just gonna give you three bands, three of the biggest uh, metal acts yep. around, and you maybe give me a, a dish that might go with their music. Yep. First one, Metallica. Oh, Metallica. Um, <laughs> Metallica is just gonna be. Um, Metallica is gonna be cassoulet. Cassoulet is a French dish that um, comes from a particular region in France. It takes four days to make. It's very complicated. Um, the dish changes over the four days while you make it. Um, it has lots and lots of layers, um, much like Metallica, I think. Yeah. And the next one is Slayer. Oh, <laughs> Slayer is just like the hottest ghost pepper, um, like taco or nachos that you could ever make. Like, just scorching hot. <laughs> okay. And one more for you. Uh, the man himself, the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my mind went to fish and chips because he's English. <laughs> um, but uh, we got to come up with something a little, a little better than that. Um, oh boy! Um, nah, fuck it, fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Consistent. Always love it. Yeah. He's been consistent. We've loved him for 50 years now. I'm going with fish and chips. Fuck it. On that note, Chris, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, my and uh, we're looking forward to tonight's food as well. Yeah, there's a lot, lot. Cool. Make sure to stop by.